The original 1984 Dune film was criticised for being complicated, confusing and incomprehensible. This was mainly because the original story was too intricate to be covered in just one movie, even if it was a long one. June 2021 avoided this problem by deciding from the very start that the story should take place over two movies. For June, the filmmakers wanted to get as much as possible in camera, which meant only doing effects digitally when doing it practically wasn't possible. The idea was to keep everything photo real and natural and to embrace the environment they filmed in. However, the film takes place in a dry desert environment with harsh bright sunlight, and this kind of bright light would be very difficult to replicate on an indoor set for shots of the ornithopters. Initially, they thought about using LED screens as a background for these shots, but there was no way the LED screens would be able to recreate the bright and dazzling desert lights. So the team decided that if they were going to shoot something that was going to be outside, they would have to shoot it outside. For the interior ornithopter work, they actually built two 12-ton ornithopters and took them out to Budapest. Then they picked the highest hill they could find and built a gimbal at the top of it. This gave them a nice and flat horizon with the ability to move and rotate their 12-ton ornithopter. Next, they built a 7.5 metre high sand coloured ramp, 360 degrees all the way around Gimbal. This they called the dog collar. This collar served two purposes. Firstly, it bounced the bright sunlight onto the ornithopter from all directions, and secondly, when they shot the action focused on the actors, the ramp in the background was out of focus. This blurred sandy background could then be blended with the background footage they'd shot previously with six cameras in a helicopter flying over the deserts of the United Arab Emirates. Even though sets would have been extended and other things would have been added digitally, blue screens and green screens weren't really a viable option, and this was for a variety of reasons. One was because the actor gives a better performance when they are immersed in an environment rather than surrounded by blue screens. Another was that light reflects off blue and green screens and actually spills onto things around them, giving everything a blue or green tinge. But perhaps one of the main reasons is that the VFX teams really wanted to ground everything in reality. Knowing that under such intense sunlight virtually everything becomes a reflective surface, they knew that if they were to use blue screens, they would also appear on these reflections. The solution? Sand-coloured screens. By using sand-coloured screens, they ensured that the actors would still feel part of the environment that any colour spilling from these screens would also be similar to the environment, and that any reflections appearing on armour or people's faces would also be in keeping with the desert environment. The clever thing about using sand-coloured screens is that if you look at a colour wheel, you'll notice that the opposite side of those orangey and yellowy sand colours, you have blues. So if you shoot a sand screen background and then invert the colours, you effectively have a blue screen. Of course, extensive tests were done to find the right colour for the sand, and they found that depending on where the sun was during the shoot, they would lose a bit of colour. But on the whole, this clever solution worked beautifully. And if Movie VFX is something that you are interested in getting into, a great place to start is Skillshare. It's a bustling hive of professionals from pretty much every industry who are itching to teach you everything you need to know to get that ideal job you've been dreaming of. I've been itching to uncover some of Unreal Engine's secrets, and in minutes, Daniel Kraft had me up and running. Look at that. And the best part is that for some of you, it's free. Yes, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box or my code FAMEFOCUS will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so don't miss out. Whether you want to level up your VFX toolbox, or like me, try out Unreal Engine, which is also free, by the way, you won't be disappointed with Skillshare. A lot of reference work was done with helicopters in order to get them to throw up dust swirls and clouds. But for some of the ornithopter shots, they shot a helicopter directly from another helicopter and then replaced it with their ornithopter. The sandstorm was also based on reference material of a real-life sandstorm in Africa obtained by National Geographic. This gave them a front-on view of a massive sandstorm. This helped them to find the balance between how tremendously big and menacing it is and also how surprisingly slowly it moves. Huge fans were used to blow the sand around during the shots and even though around 18 tonnes of sand and dust were used, the VFX team knew they'd have to add even more digitally later on. It may seem like a bit of a waste of time fanning sand around on set when you're going to add more digitally later, but it's this real sand that really sells the shot. Real sand sticks to people. It bounces off objects, and indeed itself. 
Using real sand made it easier for the VFX teams to extend the effect, and having real interaction as a base is key for creating an effective visual effect, even if it did mean that some crew members went home bright orange. Perhaps one of the most interesting shots in the film, and one no one really noticed, is Duncan's outfit change. Here the VFX team had to change Duncan's Freeman armour to the white shirt. In the editing phase they realised that from a story point of view they needed a shot of Duncan in an ornithopter escaping from the palace, but they didn't have one. However they did have a shot that they weren't going to use of Duncan in Freeman armour going to see Paul and Jessica after the attack on the Arakeen. So they used this shot and digitally changed the armour for the white shirt. This shot, although may at first seem a bit ridiculous to do in CGI, is in fact a perfect example of why, when and how to use visual effects, and what a crucial tool they are in the filmmaker's toolkit. And don't forget, if you want to add tools to your filmmaker's toolkit, you can do so for free with Skillshare by using our special code or by clicking the link in the description. So don't miss out. Invest some time in yourself. Give Skillshare a try today.